left her out and just for a little bit, kind of just to give her a time out. And that really seemed to make a difference. Scaring everybody. Yeah, we understand that this is, you know, part of establishing the pecking order, but we don't want anybody getting hurt either. And we don't want the chicks super stressed out. They're out. They're out. One of them's out. What are you doing with your babies? Is one of your babies out? Hey, what's up? My name's Crystal. Welcome to our channel. I am really excited. We have our dark Brahma chicks that we got back in April. They are eight weeks old now, or between eight and nine weeks old. It's time for us to start transitioning them out to our chicken run and coop with our existing flock of six chickens. Briefly, we got our six chickens last year. We got them as chicks and raised them up to be about eight weeks before we moved them out to the new chicken coop and run that Steve and I built. It was really easy to do because we didn't have an existing flock that we had to introduce the chicks to. We just kind of put them out there and around 12 weeks, we started training them to go up onto the roosting bars using their ladder. They figured it out pretty quickly and it's been pretty easy ever since. But this year we bought two baby chicks. We got them locally at a farm and grain store nearby. We got two dark Brahma chicks and they're so cute. They have little feathers on their feet, but they've gotten really big and they're pretty. They're about eight weeks old now, so they're, they're pretty good size. We decided to transition them to move out to the coop and we're gonna do it in a few stages. We've never done this before. We don't wanna put them out there with the other hens and them get picked on or anything like that. So we're just gonna slowly transition them and intermingle them um, over the next few days. We took the chicks out a little bit ago from the house. We have the brooder all set up. So let me show you what the brooder looks like and us getting the chicks out here. This is our setup right now. We have the um, stock tank with a baby gate on the top because they like to jump out otherwise. Homer, what are you doing with your babies? Is one of your babies out? You know, we've never done this before where we've introduced chicks to the flock, but they're pretty good size. They might be okay with them, but I think we should at least do a day. Yeah, I'll see how they are. We're just going to take one out at a time and bring them out there. So getting them out here was pretty easy. Now let me show you what we have. We have all these baby gates uh, that we use like when we go camping and things that we set up around the camper, around underneath the awning, especially when the kids were little. It keeps them contained and also is helpful if we open up the door and keeps the dogs in a little bit. And we have a whole, whole bunch of these that we've collected over the years. All Steve and I did was we took six of them and made a rectangle and then put three of them, I don't know if you'll be able to see, across the top. And then we took a tarp and zip tied it down because we're supposed to be getting rain. Originally it was just tomorrow and then it was Monday and now it's saying we might get rain today, tomorrow and Monday. We used a binder clip to keep this corner down. I haven't been putting electrolytes in the water inside because they've been inside in the same routine, but I did put electrolytes in their water today, moving them out here. And I threw some scratch grains in there also, but they're doing really good. They're very sweet. And they're learning to scratch and peck. I really like this using the baby gates because it's easy to maneuver and move around. Now we have it over here near the chicken run. They've already been checking out the hens in here. We have two buff Orpingtons, two lavender Orpingtons, and two black Australorps. And we just love them. And we have their food and water underneath the coop here. I'm not really sure how we're gonna be moving the chicks in here, but I, we're just gonna take you along as we do this step by step. But later on today, we'll bring them back inside and then tomorrow move them back out here. But I'm pretty confident with the size of the chicks now versus the hens. I mean, they're not as big as the hens, but you know, eight the, for eight weeks, they're a good size. Big enough to hold their own, I think. That's what we did today and I'll bring you back tomorrow with what we do next. 
So it is day two of us moving the chicks outside. We brought them in last night, and then this morning, Steve moved the small cage inside the run so that the chickens could be closer with the chicks. And so far, neither one of them seem to care about each other. <laughs> but um, they've been out here for, I don't know, about an hour, maybe a little bit more. We're gonna go ahead and put their food and water in there. Uh, we wanted to leave it out for a little bit so that the chickens weren't all about whatever was inside with the chicks. You're doing pretty good out here. We'll keep them out here all day today. We'll see how they do later and decide if we're gonna bring them back in or not. Or if we'll leave them out here for the night. I don't know yet. Okay, so it's the afternoon. It's about dinner time. We decided that we're gonna try and let the chicks out with the other hens. And all we're gonna do is just crack open a spot so that the chicks can run back in there. They're out. They're out. One of them's out. And the other one is confused at <laughs> how it got out. I think they're a pretty good size. Um, they're obviously not the same size as the hens. So we brought the brooder outside. We only had to clean it a few times. That was the benefit of only having two chicks this time around. Huge difference. Way easier to maintain them inside. But not gonna lie, <laughs> it does smell a little bit in the living room, so I'm happy to have that out. We have this little kennel here that I think we got when we got our pup Rocky. We're gonna use it for the chicks to stay inside of the chicken coop tonight because we don't trust the hens to leave them alone just yet. We've noticed that the Lav one of the lavenders, the one that gets picked on the most by the other hens, is the one picking on the... Yeah, here she is. She's the one picking on the chicks. Yeah, we understand that this is, you know, part of establishing the pecking order, but we don't want anybody getting hurt either. And we don't want the chicks super stressed out. So we're gonna put their food and water inside that. And then we will put the kennel inside the coop for the evening. And then t first thing tomorrow morning, I'll come out and let them back out. I'm gonna continue to leave this in there so that they can use it to hide behind or run into. Probably like, thank God, get me away from those guys. All right, we'll get them their food and water and... All right, I'll be back out in the morning and let you guys out first thing. Okay, it's the next day and we had some thunderstorms last night, so... It's quite the loud evening out in the chicken coop, I'm sure. For a first night for chicks. Good morning. Good morning. Oh no, it's starting to rain again. Well, it's starting to rain again. I'm gonna go in and get them their food and water. Get them some more water with electrolytes in it because I'm sure it's been stressful. And get them some more chick start. All right, it looks like the chicks went in there. I think I'm gonna leave this here for them just so they have a um, it makes it harder for the hens to get in there, for them to escape if they need to, and they can still get out uh, when they want. All the rainwater. Oh, how am I gonna get rid of that? All right, so I got the water off the top, 
and they have the inside of their kennel cell here to run into it's dry in there and then they have their food and their water and they can if they want to jump out to be out here they can or if they want to escape they can go back in and hopefully you ladies play nicer mostly you in the back corner there so this is day four and the chicks are out there i took the kennel out for today because i don't think they went out um into the run very much yesterday if at all i'll try this and see how this goes but i think we're getting close to being able to just let them be in there together all right so it's the next day here is this day five i don't even know I think today is the day we're gonna let the chicks go in the coop and let them start just being with the other chickens. Still have their food and water in the back there. Yeah, we'll see what we do later, but I'm thinking that's the plan for now. Be nice. All right, so it's the end of day five. Time to get them into the small animal carrier. We've been leaving the door closed at night in the coop. Now we're going to start leaving it open so that way they have a spot that they can run to if they need to. If they feel like getting adventurous, they can run out. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm scaring everybody. Sometimes some of the chickens try and run and meet me in here. All right, so i leave the door open for them so they can adventure out if they want to. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so yesterday Steve put the little kennel inside the coop, but left the door open on the kennel so that the chicks could go out and explore the coop at night. And if they weren't comfortable, they had a place to like run back to. Um, and this morning I came out to make sure that they made it outside okay. And I see our hens, and I also see the chicks inside their little, their little kennel in there. Um, it's open for them to go in and out of, but I think they came out by themselves and did it. I wish I had seen. So, I think we're getting close. It's the evening now, and we want to start training the chicks to go in the, get... <laughs> the automatic chicken door. See, we have their kennel in there still with the door open so they can go in there if they want. So I think we're on day seven and last night, as you saw, we moved the chicks into the coop and we ended up closing the door so that they could have some time in there. And then when the chickens were ready to go in, we went back out and we opened the door. The door normally opens and closes on its own. We watched the hens go up on their roosting bar like normal. And then we saw the chicks doing the same which was really neat to watch, especially since last year we had to train our chicks to do it because they didn't have any other chickens to show them what to do. So it was just neat to see. This morning, the door opened about 6.35. We're gonna change that. We have to, I'm gonna get it to open up a little bit sooner than that. But the chicks and the chickens came out to the run and the chicks ended up going into back into their little safe place there and 
um, which is fine. I think we're gonna leave it out here for now. They haven't gone in by themselves. Here we are, I don't know how many weeks later. Yeah. It's been at least a month of transitioning the chicks out here and they are doing great. But they're really, really cute and fluffy oh. and uh, getting quite big. So they're standing up for themselves more, um, especially against the mean lavender. So Steve is in there getting ready to take out the, I don't even know what I would call that. It was just a little, uh... Here. Spot for them to run into if they start getting picked on. Their safe space? Yeah. Steve's getting rid of the safe space because they don't really need it. We also have a broody hen. Reba. Reba. We don't know if it's prompted. We have baby birds living up here that are very get very loud. And so we don't know if that prompted her broodiness or if that's just the way things went. But Steve has to get her out every once in a while so she gets some water. But we had some footage that I'll show here of what we had to deal with. Really, it was just the bullying of one of our hens. She was not very nice to the chicks at all. There was many times where she actually blocked our automatic chicken door to prevent the chicks from going inside. A couple of times Steve came out here and left her out and just for a little bit, kind of just to give her a time out. And that really seemed to make a difference. He would m let the chicks go in the coop, move the mean hen outside, and then close the, the door so that she couldn't go in. And basically, like I said, give her a, a chicken time out. And that did seem to make a difference. But for the most part, they all seem to be getting along pretty good. I know that Lavender is not, she's not a fan of the chicks. So that's the chickens. I'm really happy with how the chicks have integrated with the rest of the chickens that we have. I think eight is a really good amount for us to be able to feed ourselves as well as give away some eggs to family and then potentially we would like to have a farm stand in the future that we can sell eggs and produce. I think we'll just like wait every couple of years to get chicks just to stagger the ages. Uh, so they're not all the same age <laughs> when they either start or stop producing. But I, I really like the way that we handled it. I think it worked out well. I'm really glad that most of the chickens didn't even seem to be phased by the chicks being there at all. It was just that one lavender. Which is really surprising to me because she was actually the most docile one. When the other hens were doing something, she would always wait. She'd be in the corner. like, And she also, I don't know if you noticed in some of the footage from like our coop camera, but she's always on the only one on the lower bar. We have two roosting bars. We have one that goes this way and one that goes this way. And she's always on the bottom one. I didn't imagine her to be the aggressor. We really thought that Reba or one of the black Australorps would be. We do have a goal of wanting to expand the chicken run. I would like to give them more space to run around. I would love to be able to let them free range on our property, but we constantly have hawks and things flying over very low too. I'm pretty sure we have families of hawks and owls and stuff living right around the surrounding woods. We live on a nature preserve and so there's just so many predator birds. They would easily get taken very quickly even with all the tree cover that we have. We do want to come up with more of a, a, a better situation for them where they have more space to enjoy the property that we have. It's nice that everything worked out really well and the fact what was really nice is the last year when the easy part with just getting a whole new flock and new chickens and everything from fresh start is that you can just move them out there and you don't have to integrate them with an, any other birds or anything like that so that was nice last year this year what was nice was that we didn't really have to train our chickens the new chickens to do much because they watched what the other hens were doing they watched when they were going in the coop at night and where they were going. I mean, literally the first night that we had them in the coop, 
where they were free when we had put them in through the automatic chicken door they went right up to the roosting bar because they saw the other hens doing it so that was really nice because I remember Steve crawling in there last year I think when our chickens were like 12 weeks old to train them to go up on the roosting bar <laughs> we had to keep putting them up until they realized that's where they're supposed to go but we really like having chickens and let us know in the comments if you'd like to see a, a coop tour we were gonna do it last year and we didn't really get much feedback on that if you're interested in seeing a coop tour I think we should we'll probably film that soon um, talk about what we would do differently if we built another coop. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.